Welcome to Stuck, Time to Improv. I'm Mary Scott with Business Riff, and we have advice for startup businesses because we want you to be wildly successful. Today, my guest is Elizabeth Duncan Hawker from Growth Networking, and she's going to talk about memorability, how to be memorable and how not to be memorable because startups, if people don't remember who you are, you're not going to get any customers, much less any venture capital. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for having me. And that was so well said. If, if we're not memorable, we're not going to get customers. I'm actually part of another book right now, and I just wrote that last night. And I put, it was very hard words, but it says no one calls me, no one remembers me, no one invites me to things, sales aren't closing. I mean, if that's their song, then it's like, okay, time to self-reflect. How are we showing up? Right. Sounds, sounds appropriate. So what are some of the things that um, you've encountered that you share with people about being memorable? Well, when I came out of corporate, I worked in corporate for 25 years, Mary, and there's an esteem that's associated to when you're an executive or you're in a business or you're working for somebody, you have a title, you have a rank, you have a big salary. When you come out and become an entrepreneur, and I want everybody to really hear this. So if, if y'all are tuning in today, if you can see us, great. Look at my expression. If you're listening to it, stop and pause. Here's the thing. You've got to start over. Nobody knows your brand. It doesn't matter what your title was. It doesn't matter how many employees you had working for you or how, how if you were a six-figure income earner. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows you. So when you go in the entrepreneur world, and, and I actually did a presentation on this called Leap of Faith going from a W-2 to a 1099, because I was astonished, Mary, when I got out there and started Red Hawk Strategic Solutions six years ago. It's a consulting and training company I do. And when I got out there, I had to rebrand myself because everybody knew me as the healthcare executive that did strategy and business development. They didn't know anything that the, of why they should hire me. So when I did that presentation, the reason why I did it, and this is the heads up to the entrepreneurs listening here or people that think they want to be entrepreneurs, is when you are going out there, you have to be very clear on your message and you have to be very clear on how you're going to show up. And you cannot show up half interested. So you just asked me the question, like, what are some things to do and not do? Well, one of the big things we see is future or potential entrepreneurs show up and they act half interested. Or if somebody asks them what they do, they won't shut up. They stand there for five, 10 minutes and tell about how they were big yucky yuck back in their yucky yuck days. Nobody cares. Tell me who you are today. Tell me why you're qualified to do this in a minute. So we're talking today about how to be memorable. You have to be translatable and you also have to be succinct. You have to leave them just like when you were dating. Remember when we were dating, right? And when we were dating, we didn't say everything on the first date or the second date. We had to have some allure. There had to be something interesting about us. We wanted to be asked out back again or, or be considered. So you have, to, you have to do that when you're a first time entrepreneur coming out there and your clarity is super important. And also, Mary, I would also add that if you're nervous, that's okay, because people will, will respect that. But what they won't tolerate is if you're rude. So if so make sure your root, your 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 like your nerves or your reservedness or your withdrawnness doesn't translate to just plain rude and abrupt. Make sure it comes across as like, gosh, I've never been here before. Could you tell me kind of who's in the room and and you know, is there somebody I should meet versus just standing there and saying, This isn't working for me. Yeah, nothing makes you more endearing than if you ask for help. But even the most it. seasoned person who asks for help is people will go out of their way to, to help you, particularly if you're looking for referrals. But I wanted to ask you, how important is it to talk about who you serve or what problem you solve rather than just what you do? If I can give you a story, you will remember me to that story versus if I just give you straight details about what I do, how I provide it, where I'm at. Tell me a story about somebody. And the hardest part you'll hear from, from new entrepreneurs is they'll say, well, Elizabeth or Mary, 
I don't have any customers yet. I don't have anybody to tell that story with. Then tell me a story about where you were success, where you were at before. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how you dealt with a very difficult customer because customer service translates everywhere you go. Tell me about how you won somebody over or you won a contract that somebody wouldn't do before. Or if you're not in sales, tell me how you came up with the invention that solved the problem that made it more efficient and that you got the products out on time. But people have experience, Mary, they just forget. They forget and they think, oh, I'm brand new to being an entrepreneur. Nobody's gonna understand. Talk about how good you are but through your stories, not just, and please don't make it the I show. You know the I show, right? I did this. I did that. I'm so great. I, I, I. Right. <laughs> that kind of stuff. So uh, when you had mentioned about terrible customer service, are there things people can do that they shouldn't do? <laughs> yes, absolutely. One is, is keep your promise. So if you're connecting with me and you owe me a quote, you owe me a follow-up call, you owe me, um, you owe me something that's supposed to come in the mail, uh, you know, like if it's going snail mail, maybe it was a package or something and you said, oh, I've got one of those, make sure you do it. Your word is your credibility. And when you, and, and that's like basic fundamental one-on-one. So uh, if we want somebody to be our customer, we have to prove that we're worthy of them. We also have to, once again, really listen. And that's one of the big faux pas that happens is we go in and we think we know what the customer wants. And how many times have we not bothered to do what, we, what I like to call a strategy call, where you actually get them on the phone or you sit down in front of them and you just talk and you just say, hey, what's the biggest challenge? What's keeping you up? So the survey, ask, do some strategies, um, ask other people, get some good mentors, and all of that will help you understand how to better approach your customer and how not to look so green, um, especially, especially if you fail to listen, because it's when we don't listen that then we really show up looking green. Right. Uh, this has been great. Thank you so much, Elizabeth Duncan Hawk, for um, oh, talking to us about how startups in particular should be memorable. And I just have a little story too. I took a train to Chicago for a workshop and I was texting back and forth the person who was supposed to meet me because I had never met them. And she mentioned, okay, meet me on Canal Street. I said, fine. And I got off the train and got onto Canal Street and was going to text her exactly which corner I was on. And it was a dead zone, no <gasps> Wi-Fi, no cell service, no nothing. Oh. But I have purple hair, and that is <laughs> how she found me. Oh, thank God, when right? I talk about being memorable, it makes yes. a difference. Yes, and make sure too, Mary, I would add to make sure your business name, if you get the pleasure of naming it, make it tie into something that makes sense. Like I love the name of this group here that you're doing is, is on the improv. I mean, that's, that's incredible. And I loved it when you said, we want you to be wildly successful. Um, I would like to mention too, just one other thing too, is Collecting True Friends is the book that I wrote. This has a lot of good business savvy in there because if you can approach people in business in the same way that you're having a relationship or conversation, just like you and I are, you're going to find that your business is just going to, it's just going to take off. It's when we look at people and we think what they can do for us, or, or we just continue to put them in boxes of like, you just work for him. I just work here. That's a customer. When we label people, it doesn't happen. But if you look at people more like, are they a good potential friend? And that's why I wrote Collecting True Friends. That's when all of a sudden the mind shifts, changes, and they feel it. People feel that in the heart if you're trying to make a connection versus you're just trying to have business. Right. Well, thanks again for joining us. And we have a gift from Elizabeth I will put in the comment section so you can check it out and contact her in the future. Thanks again for joining us. We're stuck. Time to improv. I hope to see you again next week.